Hello, I'm Doug Musio. This is City Talk. Amtrak, accidents and funding. Uber, a game changer. The MTA, a $32 billion capital plan, $15.5 billion short. The Second Avenue subway, east side access, fare hikes, connected vehicles and smart highways, crumbling bridges, roads and tunnels, congestion pricing, deja vu. Joining me to talk about New York City transportation is Robert Buzz Paswell. Dr. Paswell is Distinguished Professor of Civil Engineering at the City College of New York. He's the Director of the CUNY Institute of Urban Systems and the Director Emeritus of the University Transportation Research Center, a federally funded center providing research and training to transportation professionals. Professor Paswell has served on numerous city, state, federal, and international commissions and task forces. From 2009 to 2010, Professor Paswell served as interim president of City College. Buzz. Great to be here again. Oh, I mean, one of my favorites, except the only problem is it feels like deja vu all over again. Well, the, well, the issue, and we always get around to the MTA, the MTA is the big elephant in the room. The MTA is basically the arteries of New York. New York can't exist with it. And when I give a simple illustration to my city, I say people come in on the subways and they go up in the elevators, and that's what makes New York great. Yeah. And the MTA is an old system. Uh, parts of it were started 100 years ago. Uh, and and uh, in the 70s, uh, the, the government, in its wisdom, put together these disparate units. The, uh, the, the bankrupt then uh, Pennsylvania-owned Long Island Railroad, right. the bankrupt New Haven, uh, uh, which is now the Metro North, and the various subway systems, and used uh, a nice gimmick, uh, having the, uh, the, uh, the Tribor Bridge as a way to, to find money to pay for it. And it looked reasonable then. The fares were low. But like everything else, expenses go up, the system gets older, it costs more money to run, ridership is up, ridership is at real highs and getting more. More and more people want to live in New York. I don't know how they're going to get on the subways. Tell me. I mean, I ride the subways every day, and they're getting more and more packed, particularly the east side line. The Lex Avenue line is packed. All the time. You don't live on the west side. It's the same thing. You go okay. down to... Oh, I, by, take by the, seven, I take the A train. The so, 72nd yeah. Street uh, subway, 72nd Street station on the west side. There are times you can't actually get on the platform. Wow. It's so crowded. And the reason is they're building and building more and more housing units in the five boroughs now. It's not just Manhattan. not just parts of Brooklyn or, or Queens. Every place. And people want to get there. The subways are crowded. Uh, you know, five and a half million trips a day. The system riding on old cars, old infrastructure. Infrastructure needs to be replaced. It needs to be modernized. It costs a tremendous amount of money. And, and I would ask anyone that, that, uh, that has a business that puts out five and a half million units of anything every day to say that they can do it for less than a $32 billion capital budget over five years is crazy. Okay. So the bottom line is the, the system needs to be reinvented. And you, uh, having read your testimony before the Transportation Reinvention Commission, what, what are the themes, what are the elements of what a reinvention would look like? Well, first of all, the real question, and I, I pose this to the commission, is who owns the MTA? The MTA is an independent government. It, it's, a, it's a public authority, and a public authority is an independent state government. It's a board of directors. It's like a mini corporation within the state. But the board of directors is appointed by the governor. It has a budget. It has to balance its budget every year. And in order to do that, and the two parts of the budget are the operating budget, which uh, uh, 50 percent come out of the fare box, and the capital budget, which some come from grants, some come from issuance of debt, issuance of bonds. And some they, comes from fares, yeah, too. Yeah. And, well, no. no just the, the oh, only this thing, is bonded. Yeah, okay, right. The only thing that comes is debt repayment, which shouldn't come out of the fare box. Right. But, but you, a rider should know that 15 to 20 percent of his fare is going to repay debt when it should be providing more service. So, uh, so it's not financed right anymore. 
uh, the, the, uh, the, the nature of who should be paying for it has changed. There's a new, new feeling that more beneficiaries should pay. Think of developers who, who uh, developers develop near where subway stations are. Think of the whole west side, oh. the west side yards. Well, also the East Midtown rezoning, right. which they were going to throw up the Bloomberg administration, all these buildings without providing transportation infrastructure. And, and you have the, the infrastructure. So uh, developers and, and uh, people who live there should pay a share. Maybe it's through uh, taxes on their condos, maybe it's through development zones, other ways. They do this all over Europe. They, they've it's what built the Hong Kong system. We're afraid to do that here. We're afraid to make any big change to a system that's, that's basically 60, 70 years old and no corporation in the United States that wants to be modern would not go through annual strategic planning to modernize. Yeah, but part of the problem is in its structure because it is so political with representatives right. regionally. They had the mobility tax, which got killed because of local political interests. So you've got all kinds of variables that are impeding what you're talking about. That's right. And that's, that's the problem with it is that uh, the governor doesn't want to raise taxes, and he doesn't want to raise, he wants to keep the okay, fares. I, let so, me just interrupt. The governor seems not to like mass transit. He's a muscle car guy. I don't know he, well, how he traveled around Queens. You've got, you've got to take what you have. I mean, the, the point is, uh, when I ran the CTA, the first thing the chairman told me when I came back unhappy one day, you have to play the hands you're dealt. Okay. And, and this, is, this is what we're dealt. We're dealt with, with uh, political positions that make it very difficult for the MTA to operate, for uh, the governor at least got a Tappan Zee bridge in place, but we don't know how that's going to be paid for in the end. But it, it was brilliant to get it on the table. Uh, our highways, if you ever drive up uh, the Palisades, the New York State part of it, it's, you, you, you're upon all heaven. Right. So, and we're finally redoing the streets in the city. <coughs> so it's not just uh, public transportation. And public transportation is going to go through uh, a huge change in the next 10 years. And, and you and I were talking about Uber before. Go ahead. And Uber, not that I, I love Uber, but the fact that a young generation and the next generation of riders, these people who are moving to Brooklyn or moving to Queens or, right. or to Staten Island right. and living on their, on their iPhones and their, and their Google things, want to know where all their transportation is when they get up in the morning. And if, if it's not happy, they'll just go for Uber or they'll go for the, if the next bus is coming. Public transportation has to join that mode, too. Public transportation has to uh, be much more accommodating, both in how you pay fares and, 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 and how you uh, get your vehicles. We're, we're going to get away, I think, in five or ten years from these fixed timetables mm -hmm. that, you, that you have to more flexible timetables, more variable routing, and the ability to respond more to, to the growing body of riders. Yeah, but that, I mean, that's a wish list. What you really need is you need real-time data. Now, is the MTA capable now of having an infrastructure, information infrastructure, to begin getting this real-time data and then acting on it? Yeah, yeah. The one thing you can say about the, the MTA is staffed by brilliant, mm. brilliant people, uh, and they know what the issues are. And, of course, if the big issue is money and they don't have it, they can't right. fund anything. Right. But they're going to something called asset management, which means let's know where everything is, what its value is, what its value creates to the entity as a whole, and in the end, how it improves the experience of the rider. In the end, the MTA is nothing more mm -hmm. than a service for providing a quality trip for everyone who wants to go to a job or go to, go to a Yankee game or, or go see their grandmother or go see... Or go see their grandchild, something like that. So the MTA, um, they they know what has to be done. They know that the, that big data is is the thing. They know that that uh, that more and more people are using smart devices. Um, they have these information kiosks that they put up. We we worked with Cisco years ago to help them mm -hmm. get that in place. So they recognize it. But like everything else, what choices do you make? You find at the end of the year your budget is small. Do you put up more information kiosks, which people want, or do you clean your stations? Right, right. That's a zero-sum game. Exactly. Okay. Tabula rasa option. We do away with it all. Let's do it conceptually. And I put you in charge of the conceptualization. Too old Where to be you? in charge. Okay. <laughs> Somebody younger, right. but not necessarily wiser. What do you start with? Well, I think you, you, you begin to look at what 
the regional transportation needs are going to be in the next five to ten years. You know what they are today. Right. Because people are making choices. You know where they're going. You know where development's occurring. You know where it's likely for development to occur. Uh, so you, you want to plan on that. But you also know that in the region you have the MTA services, you have New Jersey Transit, you have Amtrak for, right. that, that yep. goes uh, uh, to Philadelphia, for example. Um, you have the Connecticut services, you have PATH system. What you need is to say, how do we integrate these, like London Transport did right. with all the services, so that the rider gets on with one card, with his, with his, his or her smart device and saying, I want to go from... Uh, I want to go from uh, uh, New York to Trenton at such and such a time. What's the fastest way of getting there? And can I now pay using this funny-looking coding thing on, right. my, on right. my device? New Jersey Transit, interesting enough, is, is already a step of the head of the MTA in how they pay fares. That's, a, that's another example. We're paying fares with swipe cards. This is a 10... The Metro card is a, was a great invention that allowed people to transfer for nothing, increased ridership and really made New York closer, which right. is one of the reasons yep. you have this urge, this surge in, in, in ridership. But it's, it's an old paradigm. The next thing would have been a tap card like they have in London. Right. Everybody's going past the tap card now. Now it's, it's, the, it's the optical thing. You have a, a little thing like you, when you go to the, your theater and they look at your ticket. Right. That's the way it's going. And pretty soon you're going to have it on your smart watch. You just swing your watch by something and somebody knows you've got money in there. You've paid your fare. The conductor doesn't have to do all this thing and give you all this kind of paper. And it's, it's faster. Just think, just think of how you board buses in New York. First place, people should get out the back door and let people on the front door. It never happens. But if your fare was paid in advance, you could get on and off the bus faster and the buses would move faster. So just... These old paradigms are making or are, are creating capacity decreases, which we can't afford anymore. Okay, let's let's talk about money. We began the opening, began the show with thirty-two billion dollar capital budget, fifteen point five billion dollars short. Explain this to me. How do we pay? For all of this, Prendergast seems to be Tom Prendergast seems to be an excellent. It's administrator. The it's the best they've had in many years. Met, but he keeps begging for money and nobody's handing it over. It, the city's not doing it. The state's not doing it. Nobody's doing it. I, I don't think, I think that's the, I wouldn't characterize as Tom is begging for money. Tom is saying, here's where the MTA is today and it's old and it's creaking and it needs work. Over the next five years, we have to invest this much to at least bring it up to a, a state of good repair. Right. Not Let even, alone build new yeah, stuff. We're not even going to have the new fare card in that period of time. We'll still be building the second phase of the Second Avenue subway. And so um, if we start the second phase of the Second Avenue right. subway, we haven't fully modernized. We don't have computer-based train control on the whole system, which is something you absolutely need. We don't have t t knowledge of when the next train's coming in most of the system. You, you, you do on the IRT, but not yeah, Thank the, you. Right. But That's why I'm right there. On, on, well, on you're, the you're old. I, the IOT, right, come on, right, Buzz. Right. Okay. Now, okay, where do we get the money? Well, you get the money. One is both the state and the city have to ante up more just from the general treasuries. Why? Because without the MTA, New York City declines. No, no question about it. The MTA is what keeps our, our economy high, the economics growing. It's really a creator of jobs. And it creates jobs upstate as well as other places. People build sure. for fare cars, for, for, for rail cars, et cetera. So without the MTA, the city is in, in deep trouble, and the state's in deep trouble. So an investment in the MTA is an investment in the health. It yeah, comes that, back in return. Excuse me, but that's, that's a logical policy right. argument in the political realities. It doesn't look like the mayor's going to kick in more money, nor the governor. And, and the legislature, some of whom... Uh, like the MTA, and some whom upstate say, well, if we give money to the MTA, why aren't we fixing roads yep. upstate? And you know something? They're right. Why aren't we fixing up roads upstate? Why don't we have a higher gasoline tax? 
People are afraid of the word oh, excuse tax. Excuse me, I live in New Jersey where the Transportation Trust Fund We're, is going bankrupt well, because the governor absolutely refuses was, to raise and, the taxes. And the money you got was poorly gotten anyway. That's from, exactly right. And might, you might lose that. The governor might eventually, DOT might take it away anyway. So, so that's the problem. So you have... You have this old system that, that has to come up to, to good shape. And we're not talking about what they're doing. Let, let me give a, a couple of quick examples. Go. New York's sister city, London, very much like New York. Same kind of population, same kind of area. I love same it. Same transit ridership. They have built in the past, uh, since they had the, uh, uh, the Olympics and, and, uh, uh, they had, and the World Fair there, they, they have built uh, three big subway lines. Yep. Um, they, they finished uh, the Jubilee line. They built another line south of Thames, and they just are finishing something called Crossrail. Yeah, Crossrail is yep. 39, 40 miles of, of suburban rail connected to new subway, fully paid for. It's coming in on time, and part of the money is coming from not only the communities through which it goes, who say we want stations here, sure. so we're going to get value from that. But developers are saying, I'm going to develop this station. That way I can make sure that people are getting out into my development. Right. So they've, they've found this a great it's solution. It's really incredible. And people are going there. And the reason they're doing that is London was getting crowded. But, but the London government said, we, we experimented in the 70s with dispersion. Didn't work. People want to work in London. We're going to make it possible for people 30, 40 miles away to work in London by having new rail systems bring them in, that was a that was a planning decision, not a transit decision. Right. A planning decision for which transit was a solution. Right, and a political decision as well. And here we've divorced city planning has nothing to do. I don't mean it has nothing to do with the MTA in, in a bad sense, but they're here. MTA is there. Why don't we have coordinated planning? RPA sees that and and RPA, but they're not an official. The regional group. plan association. The plan association. Right. They have great ideas. But there's, it's hard to get their ideas. But you know why? Because we have all these disjuncted governmental jurisdictions that have their own values, right. and they compete, That's or right. they don't talk to and one another. And they waste money by competing. That's exactly they right. They duplicate services. Yep. Yep. Okay. So you've talked about, we've talked about the capital plan. What is the capital plan? What are the elements of the capital plan? What are the priorities? What do we pay for first? Okay, the biggest thing in the capital plan is rolling stock. Uh, Federal Transit Administration, by law, says a bus has a, an age of 12 years, a rail car 20 years, and that um, uh, you can, through midlife rehabilitation, a bus can, you can extend a bus's life to 18 years and a rail car to 35 years. I think but it I've means that, some of those 35-year-old yeah, well, ones already. I, well, I think we all have. But, but the point is, is that it's saying a certain percentage of your fleet has to be turned over every year because mm -hmm. you don't buy them all. Sure. All 5,000 rail cars weren't bought in one year. Sure. They were bought over a period of years. Sure. So, so a twelfth of the buses have to be purchased new every year or a twentieth of the rail cars. Buses are over a million dollars each. Rail cars, five, six, seven million dollars each and going up. They're very expensive. So that's the big thing. You have to, uh, nobody likes to, to spend capital money on things that, that aren't uh, sexy like new stations. You have to buy track and ballast and signals and lights and, and rehabilitate facilities. So before you've spent on, on your mega projects, which are the glamour projects, yep. you spent a lot of money on keeping the system running. It just is in your house Roof wears out, you got to have a new roof. A roof has a life of 30 years. Right. If you don't get a new roof, your house caves in. Well, <laughs> and that's, that's, that's basically what the, 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 the major capital is. But then you have the mega projects. You have Second Avenue Subway. You have East Side Access. Access. You're redoing um, uh, South Ferry because it was flooded. Right. Uh, which is going to cost more, ironically. And also, you have some it. of these glamour projects like the transit hub downtown, which, which is, is. Oh, no, see, the, that's an important. New York, I know I agree, but New York you need is, all the accoutrements. The, absolutely. New York, in fact, it's underbuilt. New York is, we like to think New York is the global capital. In, in Paris, do you think when they build a Louvre station, you think, let's cut the dollars in the Louvre station because it's, it's, it's so unimportant to Paris or we don't have the money? You go out to the Louvre, so you know you're near the Louvre. Okay. Right? 
and in Piccadilly in, in London, you know by the, the colorful tiles and everything, you're in a great area. In New York, the, the Fulton Street Station is great. It could have been greater. It could have been shops. It could have been a central location that says to tourists, here you are in New York. You're, you're in two places. You're in the center of one of the densest cities in the world with all the excitement. And also you're a few blocks from 9-11. And there should, be, there should have been wayfinding things in there. So there's a lot of things that, that should be done in New York that aren't because there's this fear that if you spend a little money, the newspapers will kill you. No one has pride in the city. No one has, has the willingness anymore to step up and say, we can do it. We're great. We were inventive. The great inventions that are occurring, you can't see underground, the Second Avenue subway, East Side Access, yep. civil engineering projects. We should be telling the newspapers and hauling students from high schools and everybody down to those places every week to show New York is still building like they built the George Washington Bridge and the Empire State Building. We're still building great civil engineering projects. And they, they hide them because they're worried about money. Okay, and if we don't do it, what? We don't do it. The reality is, if the city gets too crowded, um, everyone says, the city gets too crowded, people will wait longer for trains. You and I know, I'll wait a little longer for a train, and then maybe I'll move to Jersey and, and work in South Jersey. Maybe I'll move to Forget Arizona. It. Don't. No, actually, don't. Neither play. Forget I'm not going to move to Arizona now because they just cut back on their schools. Maybe I'll move to California. Uh, maybe I'll move up to Seattle. People like Seattle. You know, there are other places that are attracting young people. A lot of young people now are saying, I, I love New York, but there's other groups that are saying, now maybe I want smaller places that are, uh, you know, uh, uh, more congenial kinds of places. If New York becomes too much of a hassle, people see they're paying too much of an individual tax, <clears throat> they're going to move someplace else. So it isn't that the subways will get more crowded and people will live with it and put on a badge saying, I'm a New Yorker. I waited for six subway trains before I got on this Nice. Morning. It won't happen. Oh, wait a minute. That's a good one. It won't happen. Okay. What about the sustainability of the system? I mean, Sandy pointed out well, there, that, that... Well, go ahead. That sustainability is, is built into everything New Yorkers do now. They have um, part of city government deals essentially with sustainability. So you see uh, work being done in the rockaways and in the shores and, and, and uh, new infrastructure uh, being built for that. And the same when you figure you're building new uh, subway and, and bus uh, uh, systems, you're, you're factoring in the fact, you're factoring in the condition to uh, make sure that it's flood resistant. If you have a flood, sure. the hardened well, South Ferry is still yeah, well, not South finished. Ferry, no, but it'll, when it's rebuilt, it won't, won't flood again. Okay. You hope. And the tunnels. You hope. Yeah. That was a little quiet, you hope. <laughs> yeah, well, but that costs money, too. Sure. So if you have to say the Second Avenue subway is going to take another year or build in sustainability at your subway stations, what you're going to put as your highest priority. Right. It's all a question of priorities. Amtrak had that horrendous accident uh, coming out of Philadelphia. What, what's the story about national rail infrastructure, particularly regional? I mean, you have this horrendous crash. You know you need more money. And the federal government says, no, we don't do it. Well, so what do you do? The federal government is, is giving us money uh, to finish positive train control. Positive train control is a computerized system. It's like your electric train. It knows where all the trains are, and if your train goes too fast, you can turn the switch and, and, the, and the train will stop. And it does it automatically? It'll do it need, automatically. You don't need it's human centralized control. Okay. You don't. <clears throat> it's like your airplanes can fly themselves now. You don't really need anybody. Please. Please. Don't, <laughs> don't tell me any of this. It's true. Okay, You go might ahead. be better off without the pilot. There's, Please. Uh, I might be better we'll off with cars doing the same thing. Well, that's coming up, too. Oh, thank you. That's coming up, too. Um, and, uh, but... Uh, what you need in Amtrak uh, is new investment in the Northeast Car. And they're, they're putting it in. But you need to rebuild the catenaries. You need, Wait a minute. What, what's catenary? That's where the electric wire is over Oh, okay. There. And, and, you know, the system is electrified from uh, New York, to, from Washington to Boston. It's expensive to electrify. <clears throat> we need to build more high-speed rail over the rest of the country. Uh, we need to build high-speed rail to take the congestion off the airports. Every trip under 500 miles should be on a train. That's a lot of people 
Uh, I prefer the Washington to New York and vice versa. It's great. It's so easy. It's much easier. It could be faster. Oh, yeah. You could go there in two hours. You could go to Albany in in 45 minutes if you had high speed rail. Well, we went from Brussels to Paris in less than an hour. It was just unbelievable. And good food at both. Yes, exactly. Thank you very much. Better than on the Amtrak dining car. Okay. What would be the one thing that if you could intervene in, you would do it? For? For? New York City transit rather than national. What would you do? One thing. Well, I think you can't do one thing. I would do a com- First, I would look at the structure of the MTA and New Jersey transit. You're talking about organizational uh, management organiza- structure. What, what makes sense in the information age, real-time information age, what makes sense so that we can, we can use our resources in a much more efficient way? Manner. We could probably save a, a, a real percentage of the budget, 5, 10, maybe a little more percent hey. of the budget by, re, by reconfiguring the system. Okay, so one is organizational and management. Secondly is we have to rethink how are we paying for the system. One is, is I think, in New York City, fares are too low. Now, let me, let me, let me we had this discussion before. And, I and agree I with say, you, by the I way. Fares are too low for the value of what you get. But there's some people that can't afford the low fares. If they can't afford the low fares, l- let me back up. But let me say, uh, the, 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 the dairies who supply milk to schools, millions of cartons a day, and that's a, I like that analogy, the school pays the full price of those cartons of milk because that's what it costs. And the dairies know what a carton of milk costs. The schools don't go to the dairy and say, it costs me a dollar a carton. I'm going to give you 50 cents a carton and give you the milk. The dairy is say, you're not going to get the milk right. from us. Right, okay. It costs so much to create a trip. You have to buy the rail car. You have to buy the person who runs it. You have to buy the maintainer. You have to buy the procurement people. You have to buy the pieces. You have to buy, pay the rent on where you store them. All these things. So it costs so much a trip. The MTA is in the business of providing trips. So they should charge the true price of what that trip is. Now... If the government says, but we have a social contract with the people who yep. live here. School children should ride free. Yep. Uh, old people should, well, it's the law, basically, but seniors and disabled people should ride a half fare. Yep. That's the law. At least yep. That's the national law. Uh, but then that's a social contract with the federal government. And, um, and uh, a, a governor or mayor might say, I want low-income workers or people looking for jobs right. to you have reduced exceptions. fares. So it's up to the government to buy down the cost of the fare, they can give people chits. They can do, they can they can uh, give them tax rebates. They can do a number of things, so that at the end of the day, the MTA is held harmless in terms of what its true costs are. Okay. The MTA is asked to be provide a, to provide a product and at the same time provide a social service. And if it's going to provide the social service, it needs those people that are asking it to do that to pay that much of the bill. Okay, we've got to stop now. Buzz, I love talking transportation, but you give me a headache. We just got started. Okay, we just started. My special thanks to Professor Robert Paswell, Buzz Paswell, providing his insight and expertise, and for the most recent tutorial on New York City public transportation. Join me next week when the talk will be on immigration with my guest Nancy Foner, distinguished professor of sociology at Hunter College and the CUNY Graduate Center here on CUNY TV. Hello, I'm Doug Musio. Let us know what you think about this show. You can reach us at cuny.tv. When you get there, click on the bar that says contact us and send your email. Whatever it is, thanks, no thanks, obnoxious, do it. Send it.